Hey there my lovelies and welcome to my booktube channel, the Sassy Library Fox. My name is V and today I'm going to talk about my top 5 books of 2022. I had a lot of 5 star reads this year, even though I didn't read all too many books, go figure. <laughs> but apparently the couple of books I read were good books. So it was pretty tough to narrow them down to just five books I loved in 2022, but I decided if I would go for more, I would just continue to bubble and the video would be super long. And I'll probably talk about those five books very long anyway, so we'll just leave it at that. So this is what we're going to do today. Never mind my coffee. My coffee is my new aesthetic. The coffee is me. I am the coffee at this point <laughs> because it's four days before Christmas or actually it's three days before Christmas and I studied so much those last couple of days so that I could finally have some sort of holidays <laughs> and yeah, I've been busy. I need my coffee. It's my new aesthetic, the sassy library fox with coffee. Anyway, <laughs> let's just move on and go right to the five books I loved this year. And I wrote them down on a list because I'm nothing without my list. And I only wrote down the names of the books on here because I already know I will talk too much about those books. Anyway, never mind. The first book on this list is The Fever King by Victoria Lee and I read this one pretty early in the year and I loved it. I absolutely loved it and adored it and it definitely surprised me. I didn't expect to love this book as much as I did. As for the plotline, it's basically about a boy named Noam. He is the kid of an immigrant. His mother died a couple of years ago and he's only living with his father. And in this fantasy world there's a virus, a blood fever of some sorts, that kills the people who get it. And it's very lethal. I think there's about 1% chance to actually survive it, if I remember it correctly. It's been a while. <laughs> and the people that actually survive it get some sort of superpowers and they work for the government to support them while doing research and it was a pretty dystopian setting. It's an MM book, so there is a relationship developing between two boys. Um, one of them is obviously Noam and the other one is Dara and I loved Dara so much and he is the son of the leader of the nation, apparently. Adopted son at that, I think. And, well, I, I really didn't like the leader. Lara was a very interesting and intriguing character, but one of those characters you, you initially distrust. Let's, let's put it that way. <laughs> And, well, if this distrust is justified or not, you gotta find out for yourself. I won't spoil anything, but I loved this book. I was really hooked when I read it. There is a second book as well, and I'll hopefully get to it in 2023, because I really, really want to read this one. And this said, I'm just going to take a sip of my coffee and put it aside so that I can talk more freely <laughs> um, and talk about the second book I loved. And the second book I loved was Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. I think I already spoke about Sorcery of Thorns and what it is about. Just to make a short recap, it's about a girl named Elizabeth Scrivener and she lives in a library and works with wardens that are supposed to protect and keep the books confined in the library because those books are all maleficence and um, dangerous books that can think and feel and sometimes 
one of those books actually turns into a demon <laughs> and then the wardens have to take it down. So that was a very interesting concept and this is just the beginning of the book. There's so, so much more to this and I gotta say I absolutely love the idea of books that think and feel and eventually turn into demons. <laughs> Um, Elizabeth Scrivener was a really great character, a very interesting heroine, and Nathaniel, oh, Nathaniel was, I love Nathaniel, <laughs> but the character I absolutely adored in this book was Silas, his um, butler of some sort, this was amazing, I, I so loved Silas, you have no idea. Um, there is coming out a short novella about those three, I think, next year. So I'm very curious about that one and I can't wait to read that one because I loved Sila so much. And this was just a standalone book and after finishing this book, I really wanted or I wished there would have been more than just one book. I wanted to have a sequel. So. The novella will be some sort of sequel, I think, so I shall be fine as long as I get more Silas, hopefully. I guess we'll see. Okay, so that was book number two and I think I'm already talking too much, but never mind. I will just continue with number three and number three is A Small Hotel by Sven Lacour. I read this, I think, in January or February around that time, definitely at the beginning of the year, and it's a book about, uh, it's a book about, yeah, try, honestly, try to fit Sven the Curse plot lines and what those books mean to me into an explanation. I always struggle with it, I never can really put it into words because those books are amazing. I wouldn't say it's a love story. It's, it's not exactly a love story, even though the blurb might make you think that it is, because it's so, so much more than the love story between the two MCs. There is a world war going on during the book, and you see the ugly and extremely horrible sides of it. You're living it with the character that's going through it. And the family bonds in this book, they were amazing. I, I, I can never put into words how amazing Sven the Cursed books are, but they are great and honestly, if you still don't know her, you should definitely check out her books. They are great. They have all the family feelings. They have all the feelings in general. They always have a deeper meaning. They tackle important and difficult topics and her books are just chef's kiss. Chef's kiss. I'm actually thinking about asking Swan for an interview to make on this channel. So if any one of you is interested in this, please let me know in the comments down below. I would really love to hear your feedback on this because I toyed with this idea for a very long time and I think 2023 might finally be the year I will go for it. Uh, yeah, well, I guess we will see where 2023 will lead me and this channel. <laughs> Anyway, I will talk about the other two books. I don't even have to look at this one because I know them by heart. <laughs> um, one of the books I loved, I absolutely so, so, so loved. I was hooked. I was honestly glad that this book had about 600 pages because I couldn't imagine not reading 600 pages of the story, which sounds weird. But anyway, and the book I'm talking about is Wolf Song by T.J. Klune. I've read a lot of T.J. Klune's books this year. I read The Extraordinaries, I read The House in the Cerulean Sea, and I read Wolf Song. But of all 
of those three books, even though they all got five stars from me, Wolf Song really was the book that did it for me. <laughs> I was addicted to that book. I wanted to know where the story of Ox and Joey was heading. I was so invested in this book. I thought about it when I closed it and when I did other tasks in my home. And Ox and Joey were always on my mind. The pack and the found family in this book is amazing. Yes, there are some phrases that are pretty repetitive and that appear again and again on the pages. I think it's just TJ Klune's way to make a point <laughs> and to try to show the character's feelings because quite honestly, sometimes our thoughts revolve about certain things and always go back there as well, especially with trauma. and. It's just, uh, for me personally, I know a lot of people think that this was repetitive and that it didn't add anything to the plot, but I think to some degree it was good that some phrases were repetitive and that um, you just got a feeling for the character and his feelings and what he thinks about. The entire book is from Ock's point of view. And I just loved this about the book. I, I loved the friendships, the found family. I loved the close bond between Joey and Ox. I loved that I could laugh during the book. I loved so much, even though the book was pretty serious at some parts and very heart-wrenching and it was killing me. It honestly, some parts of this book destroyed me, <laughs> but others, um, yeah, others were so great and totally made up for it again. And if you don't know what Wolf Song is about, it's basically a book about werewolves. There are four books in the series. Wolf Song is the first book of the series. It's about the love story of Ox and Joey who meet at a very young age. I think Joey is 11 when he meets Ox and Ox is 16, if I remember it correctly. And yes, there is an age gap between those two, but no worries, nothing ever happens while they are so young and there only happens something romantical when they are older. So, when they are older, those, I think, five years, those five years don't wait as much as when they are teens or children still. And I think that was a quite smart move from TJ Klune. I know a lot of people will say, oh my god, 11 and 16 years old, but quite honestly, there isn't happening anything. They are just friends at that point, and they have a very, very long friendship before anything even happens. So, yeah, be aware of that when you go into the book, and if you are sensitive to age gaps, but I can tell you, nothing really happens until they are actually adults. <laughs> so, yeah just to take it out of the way. And it's basically about those two finding each other and later on falling in love with each other. And there is a lot of other plot and a lot of werewolf plot that I'm not going into, but let's just say this book is amazing. It's heart-wrenching. It's bittersweet at some points and it destroyed me and built me up again and I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> so that was one of my absolute favorites in 2022 and the second favorite in 2022 that was one of my absolutes and which I just read recently was The King's Man by Nora Sakavich. And oh, this book, this book, it was already the third book in the trilogy, in the All for the Game series. 
if you watched recent videos of me, you probably saw my little meltdown on the cam when I was about 70% into the book. <laughs> so you know how I feel about this book. The Andrel, Andrew and Neil ship finally takes off in that third book. I don't think that's a spoiler because at this point everyone who ever heard of the series will know that Andrel are a ship. <laughs> Um, it was uh, painful to read, extremely painful at some parts, but also so very good. And uh, I just loved the dynamic between the Axie team, between Neil and his friends, between Andrew and Neil. That dynamic is just, whoa, whoa, I don't have another word for it. I was obsessed with this series, with this last book. I honestly would have wished there would be a fourth book where the relationship actually takes off. <laughs> but um, no such luck. Nora Sakevich obviously didn't write the fourth book, so I buried myself very deep in the fandom <laughs> and read lots of fanfics. One of them is even or reads even like a fourth book so that's amazing I'm currently addicted to that one because after finishing the book I had still so many questions and I wanted to get some answers and some people were really kind and wrote fanfics about <laughs> what happens after the book so I will forever be thankful for those people um, and I, I don't want to spoil anything or talk all too much about the book because it was already the third in the series. But what I will talk about is the relationship between Andrew and Neil. Because I absolutely adore the consent in this book. Both of them have a very, very tough heart extremely painful past. As I already said, this book has all the trigger warnings in the world <laughs> and then some. So it's not easy to read, it's very hard and tough to read, but those two on page, they're constant asking for consent and never doing anything they know the other wouldn't like, always stopping when there is a line or when they see they are crossing a line or even when they are told they are crossing a line. Whoa, I just, I, I never thought I would be, I don't know, I would be a fan of, is it a trope? Is consent a trope? I don't know. <laughs> But if consent actually counts as a trope, I'm definitely, so, so definitely a sucker for that trope. <laughs> um, yeah, I won't say anything more about book three of the All for the Game series. I probably should do a video review about the entire series where I could, I don't know, tackle or address certain topics. But... I have no idea if you want to see this or not. Please just let me know in the comments down below. I would really love to hear your feedback on this. If you would love to hear or to see me do a review about All for the Game. Um, yeah, this was the last book I was talking about today. Those were my absolute top five books that had me obsessed, that had me looking up fanfic and fan art after I finished those books. I loved them all. I was such a fan of those books. You have no idea. Or probably after this long video you do. Hopefully. Anyway, <laughs> um, I'm already at the ending of my video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like, subscribe, write me a comment down below. I always love to get your comments. You know that. <laughs> And, well, I guess there's nothing left to say except of take care, stay healthy and safe, and see you around the next time. Bye!